you were saying that while we study the Dalani so far, you still feel aggressed by the violence in the world, the rapes, the theft, the, the, uh, the injustice. To which I answered that this Dalani does not endorse injustice and is not to be used as a justification for evil to continue. It is about how you deal to what happens in your experience and what you can do about it. And then I went on to take the example of a theft. If someone steals your money, you're the one suffering from losing that money, therefore, because you were attached to it and because you have your insecurities, because you have a life, you have bills to pay, therefore, you have responsibilities and a load of human system that causes you to suffer if someone takes away money from you, therefore, you're affected. So you should work on that. From the point of view of personal growth, you should work on your suffering if you lose money by someone else's ill intention. It doesn't mean that the other had the right to be a thief. It doesn't mean that injustice is acceptable and you should, if you act with virtue, if you believe in sudare, sudarapati, you should call the cops when, when, when you can't. You should inform justice. You should do proper actions for the law to be respected and for your rights to be respected. Do you understand? However, if someone aggresses you through words, through physical harm, through thievery, through any kind of abuse, and you use justice in the best of your ability, and justice is rendered, you'll still be angry at the guy who hurt you. Therefore, you didn't grow. Okay? This Dharani is about your evolution as a person. If you become virtuous, it doesn't mean that you forgive a thief to give him permission to thieve again. It means that you forgive a thief for hurting, and you will do what is required for everyone to stop suffering about it, which is to call to invoke justice. Okay? To be a master of virtue is not to say, anything can happen, I can just breathe. That's not it. It's a Dharani to invoke all virtue and all correct behavior at any level from anyone around. But you are the cornerstone of your experience about it. Okay? We're going into the Sangha right after that. Okay? But before we can address the Sangha, we have to address ourselves. When we forgive someone, I had a conversation with an Hindu in India who says, of all the virtues, forgiveness is the only one I don't accept. Forgiveness is unacceptable. So why? So because forgiveness... <clears throat> If you forgive someone, you'll never learn. So that's, that's a misunderstanding of forgiveness. That's what I answer. So no. If a problem happens, if someone does evil, the behavior has to be corrected. Good. So responsibility requires that a, a behavior from someone that induces suffering in others or themselves has to be corrected. He says, yes, good. But forgiveness is not about that correction. Forgiveness is about your emotional reaction after the ill deed is done. Say, for example, and we all have this confusion. Someone who steals from me, I forgive this person, so I will not stay angry. If I stay angry and this person does not correct their behavior, I suffer from my anger. If I stay angry and the person correct their behavior, I'm still suffering from my anger. Forgiveness is not about if the other corrected their behavior or not. Forgiveness is about if I remain emotionally engaged in the event. So if the other corrects his behavior or not, I am unhappy. So forgiveness is to decide that I don't want to suffer anymore about that event. So forgiveness is not to accept injustice. Forgiveness is to stop generating anger because your pride was hurt. When someone steals money from you, 
What really hurts is your pride. How dare someone steal from me? That's what happens. It's a proud reaction. Okay? And an attachment reaction. So you suffer emotionally what happens to you. Regardless if they pay their crime, regardless if they do it again or not, regardless if behavior is corrected or not, forgiveness is about the emotional implication that will ensure that you and most often the other will keep suffering of an event even if it was healed and paid to justice and corrected. You'll still suffer because it was not forgiveness. There was no forgiveness. Okay? So forgiveness is not to accept that injustice is to humiliate yourself, to disengage the pride reaction of defense and offense that results from, from anything that affects your ego. That is forgiveness. So I explained that, and the Hindu said, I still don't believe in forgiveness. He said, why? Because he needs to change his behavior. And he just didn't get anything. Okay? So sometimes that explanation is beyond your ego's will to evolve. Okay? When I teach you about forgiveness, your ego will invoke any argument to not forgive because you prefer remaining proud. You don't want to become vulnerable to an event like this and forgive another and promote compassion. You don't want to. So even if I explain clearly that the virtue of justice and the virtue of forgiveness work hand in hand. Both are from the fourth plane. Both are from the same area. Justice and forgiveness is the same thing. Forgiveness is misunderstood as stupid acceptance of suffering, of injustice. It's not the case. I explain this and your ego goes, yeah, but... I don't want to forgive because they didn't resolve their issue. Okay, well, so you mean the ego is stupid enough to say, I prefer to suffer until the other one heals. <laughs> Come on, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> God, I don't care. I don't care if I'm hurt. As long as he does not correct the shit, I want to be in state of hatred. <laughs> Duh! Wake up! You know, this is, this is the ego's difficulty to understand the philosophical variation, the difference between forgiveness, what it really is, is to disengage the suffering that you have. Because if the person in front of you just insults you, and you stay angry at this person, but this was just a little insult, and three days after, you need someone to help you build a house, and that guy is a superb house builder. And you could just ask his help and say, oh yeah, I want to go and help you. But you can't. You still suffer from not liking this person. You cut yourself from the community, regardless if it evolves or not. Therefore, if you don't forgive, you don't trust that people can evolve. Therefore, you don't trust that you can evolve. Therefore, you'll never enlighten or accomplish yourself. Not forgiving means you don't want to evolve because you don't trust that the others will do it eventually when their time comes. Okay? That's preferring to be proud and suffer hatred. Breathe. <laughs> okay, forgiveness is all about pride, all right? So it means to forgive your ego? What? So forgiveness is like, a forgive my ego? Forgiving yourself? Yeah, yeah, my, yeah. my ego. That's very good. Yeah. It is wonderful to forgive yourself. It doesn't mean that you should continue to act stupid. <laughs> because you're going to suffer again from your stupidity. Or your irresponsibility. The reason why you should get better is not because you hate yourself of being so bad. That's not a good motivation. <laughs> the reason why you should get better is because it feels good <laughs> to act responsibly and better. The reason why you should progress is because you feel much better as a being. 
to be virtuous than when you are vicious. It feels good inside when you are compassionate and you help others. And it feels bad when you hurt others and they hate you. So the reason why you want to progress spiritually is because it feels good. Not because you hate yourself if you don't. That's a very bad motivation. So forgive yourself for being such an <coughs> asshole. And accept yourself as you are. But Maha, if I forgive myself, I'll never change. Referring to that conversation with the Hindu I had. Yes, you can change if you forgive yourself. Because forgiving yourself does not endorse irresponsibility. <laughs> okay. <sighs> the ego has such a profound conflict, okay? And we think that it's hard to understand. It's not hard to understand. Your ego is irritated that we're stealing his tricks. We're mentioning his tricks to make you stuck where you are. The ego's function in evolution is to successfully define love. That's his function, why we have an ego, is that we can eventually define love. That's why we have one. However, its goal is not its function. The, the, the reason for the ego is to allow us to define love, but its goal from its point of view is to make sure to come back to be that God and not you. Well, actually it's a paradox because your ego is you. Okay? So your ego wants to stop your evolution so you'll have to die and come again. Because when you stop incarnating, it's afraid to stop existing. Okay? So your ego knows it's better to forgive, but if you forgive, you get closer to self-realization, therefore he's going to disappear, he's afraid, so screw forgiveness, let's complicate everything and dramatize. And then you go back to projection. Yeah, I understand everything you just taught, Maha, but what, okay, let's just for example, what if Maha, okay, I forgive someone, but he never corrects his behavior, bam! You still misunderstand, it's not about the other. It's not about if the other misunderstand or not. It's about you will never be able to help someone who just aggressed you if you don't immediately forgive them when they do. Don't you appreciate forgiveness when it comes from me? Because you look at me with hateful eyes when you're angry at what I just taught. And I see that hatred in your eyes. And I'm so happy that you progressed to that step of awakening. Okay, what's the next one? How to free you from that hatred? I would not be able to teach you efficiently if my pride would affect it when you disagree with the teaching. So, ah, if he doesn't agree with my teaching, fuck it. I'm going to teach her instead. You know, how can I guide you? In other words, if you want to help, if you want to be useful, five minutes ago or so, I use an example, you will not receive from others what you need if you block yourself from others by hatred. Okay, That was one example. But when you're a Lord, you forgive because you want to stay accessible to the others. It's about what you can bring to others. So you forgive those who hurt you because while you hate them, you can't help them grow through their mis mischief. So as a master, as a saint, you forgive someone who hates you because you won't be able to teach them how to stop hating if you hate them too. So it's about being whole, <laughs> basically, breed. Your ego has no problem understanding this, but your ego hates it because we're revealing all these tricks. <laughs> how he slows you down <laughs> on the path to feeling great about yourself and then sharing it with others. Okay. So, if someone hates you, and you can't do anything about it, why would you suffer that offense? Forgive. And if you can do something about it, why would you suffer the offense? Just do something about it. What if, by, by some kind of great chance, the other would grow from that? Do you believe in prayer? Do you believe in prayer? So if you look at someone with hatred, and that is your prayer for that person, there's an effect. Because 
sarva dharmani avartani. It's what you define by your gaze, by your definition. Talk about that. What if someone does something very evil, but because of compassion, you can still look at this person as someone who will eventually grow? You're going to affect that person and encourage them in their evolution because you see them as people learning and not as assholes just offending your pride. So your gaze, your salva dharana, your salva dharana vartani defines everything around you. Therefore, forgiveness is an absolute. You must understand that justice is also an absolute. Or else there's iniquity. Do what you can. And when you cannot correct an injustice, why worry about it? Just let it go. You can't do anything about it. Just let it go. Stop suffering. Trust evolution. Their karma will hit them. Now your ego will say, ah, good. Vengeance. Their karma will hit them. <laughs> That's not a compassionate way to go about it, okay? That's, that's still a temporary grace, you know, a medical grace. <coughs> Trust evolution. Their karma will hit them because your karma will hit you, okay? And that's how it works. Okay. This Dharani is not to become responsible. This Dharani is to remember you already are fully responsible of everything. It's not because you are irresponsible and you want to become responsible. This Dharani is to remind you it's too late. You are always totally responsible of everything. Just accept it and behave accordingly. Breathe. In the last part, Sarva Dharani Avartani, Sarvanda Shyavartani, Suavartani. You can feel in this profound, powerful affirmation of you as a creator of your life. A resistance from your ego that says, No, no, he's telling all my tricks. Shut up. I want this seminar to be over. <laughs> Did you remember that? You have this reaction of, ooh. Okay, basically, Ma, you're explaining that there's no way to avoid an integration. I can never have a break. I didn't say that. I said, I'm saying, did you really ever avoided an integration once in your life? You never could spare yourself a moment of progress. It never happened. Because when you don't do personal growth, life runs after you to impose you the suffering, to force you to see it. Did you ever successfully avoid a suffering that you have created? Never. You've never succeeded in avoiding an integration by force or by your own will. It never happened. So this is not a dharani to tell you, you can't lie to yourself anymore, you can't avoid suffering anymore. It's not a dharani for that. It's a dharani to remind you, you never successfully avoided the suffering before. It will never happen, so why are you so freaking lazy? <laughs> you have no choice then to progress. So why do it with your two feet on the brakes? Duct tape the feet on the brake so you never progress. <laughs> then you have a bulldozer behind pushing and you have the smoke and it smells like shit. Oh, maybe it's a smell from not doing the dishes for three years. Oh no, it's the brakes. It's the tires burning. No cross metaphor. <laughs> Did you get it? <laughs> the ego is simply disappointed right now because we're revealing the tricks of the trade, of the ego. How can I successfully lie to myself and pretend that I'm comfortable when I'm not? If you went through a depression, through a few moments of despair, if sometimes you spend an evening alone at home and 
an anxiety crisis takes you and the pain of loneliness is torturing you for two or three hours, sometimes a few days, you know that you can't avoid your suffering because you tried everything. Then some solution is with drugs and alcohols and it ruins your life even more. It becomes even worse. You know? So basically there is no way to avoid our responsibilities. And once you accept it, it will, it, it will roll smoother. You'll, you'll remove the tape, you'll get your feet off the pedals, put one on the gas, one on the brakes to learn how to drive correctly instead of just, no, I don't want to evolve. There is a force inside you that does not ask your permission. It tries to stop because it's afraid to stop existing when you enlighten or when you accomplish yourself. You understand that? Please observe it. It's called ignorance. Each time it's time, let's say each time you have a shame to dwell into. Oh no! Not one of these freaking denials again! Oh! No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't want to. But it's okay, it's okay now, it's okay. You see? The Dandapati that I need, it's the part, oh, it's okay, it's okay, we'll do it. <laughs> you see that, do you see that force inside that is, that is troubled, that is disturbed by the Dharani so far? Well, some of the advanced students see it. There is a force that is displeased. Like if a, you know, a, a magic card trick, a, a magician of prestidigitation, so someone who just does a show, and then you have a guy go on stage and start to explain all the tricks of the magician. It's like, oh, I'll be out of a job. That's what the ego does. I'll be out of a job. The soul will decide everything. Oh my God, I'm going to disappear. I will not be the Lord of this life. So delivering the tricks of the trade is disappointment for the ego. So then we go into full of justification. <clears throat> but we don't want to forgive if the other does not carry the behavior, which is completely unrelated. But we do believe it's related. And we're convinced that the other people's behavior has to do with forgiveness. Because it's a trick of the trade of the ego to keep us confused. However, the ego knows all the tricks and he really doesn't mind. He just, just want to stay in charge. Well, this is you. The ego is you. Okay. For example, you have a conflict with a person, and you say, well, I, I really have to call that person, you know, even if it's been two years, three years, I need to call this person, we should meet, take a coffee and talk, so that the healing can happen. Bullshit. This is bullshit. If you forgive something that happened, you forgive. If you need to talk to that person for forgiveness to happen, it means that you're not forgiven. You will talk that person until he dies or acknowledge that you were right. Therefore, you're just repairing your pride. It's not forgiveness. If you wait for someone else to agree with your side of a conflict for forgiveness to happen, this is not forgiveness. And this, there's no healing there and there's no evolution. This is just getting reparation. This is trying to convince the other that you are right. This is just to rebuild your wall of pride. So there is no forgiveness and there's no evolution and no progress. And you will be hurt again for that pride to break again. It is not required for someone else to agree for you to do forgiveness. It is a personal experience. The reason why you should talk to a person with whom there was conflict is for them to know that forgiveness is absolute and that if they can grow about it they can but that their forgiveness you don't need it you have yours and breathe you see tricks of the trade about forgiveness which then allows personal growth like if the ego gave permission to grow or not so there's a lot of study of virtue in there, but 
And then we get the argument again. But, but seriously, Maha, the other was unjust. Refer to that conversation I had with the Hindu, who didn't want to forgive until the behavior was corrected. It's not related. But we find ways to go back to this misunderstanding that forgiveness accepts injustice. It's not related. We'll find another way. I'm telling you about it. Give, me, give yourself two or three days. You'll find another way to take different words, to misunderstand it, and reaffirm, I just don't want to forgive. I prefer that the other acknowledge how great I am. <laughs> and I'm going to beat it down their skull until they say yes. <laughs> or ate me too much. To continue. Do you understand that? Okay. Can you see a part of you, the ego, is ready to fight to keep its right on what is virtue or not? Can you see a part of your ego is ready to fight to justify and explain that actually virtue is not a correct way to act? Virtue is stupid. You should not forgive. Don't be charitable. You're losing your money. Don't be compassionate. It's all about you. It's not about the other. Don't be prudent. Just live in faith. Live in the now. Don't have faith, just be careful, then you just find security. Your ego is always trying to prove to you through very clear logical reasoning that virtue is actually bad for you and you should never do it. What is logical? Clear, logical, that makes sense. Your ego will be so good, like a lawyer that has so good arguments that you'll actually believe it's better to be vicious. It's a, to be a good human, don't be prudent, be insecure. Don't have faith. Plan ahead. Well, you should plan ahead. Don't have faith, just pat everything. Don't forgive, invoke justice. You're not, when you have justice without forgiveness, it's not justice. It's pure punishment, regardless if the other was right or wrong. There's, there's no objectivity of, of the law when there's justice with hatred. You want the other to be guilty. With forgiveness, your hate doesn't push in that direction. Maybe you'll see that you are wrong and the other was right. But while you have, until you forgive, your emotion of hatred is convinced the other's a culprit and you are right. Once forgiven is done, you look at it and say, well, the other was not right but wasn't wrong. Now I can understand from their point of view they did their best. It just didn't fit with my pride. Oh, okay. You know, maybe we can grow from that. Sometimes, come on, do you always do your best? I'll say the great majority of the time you do your best. Seriously, even lazy and vicious and all things. You never wanted anyone to suffer of your actions. Do huh? you agree? You, you, you don't intend to hurt people, but people end up being hurt because of reflexes, because of animal behaviors, because of unawakened parts of you. So, you didn't want to hurt people, but people are hurt. And sometimes they blame you. Now put yourself in their shoes. They're the same. They never wanted to hurt you. It just happened by their conditioning, by their belief, by their immaturity. So forgiveness is to accept. This is where we are now. We have to trust evolution. It's, we're progressing, okay? It's good. We're progressing. Breathe. It's heavy, eh? Whoever it's, it's heavy. Remember when we were talking about justification? In the first four or five lines of the Dharani, we're saying you can't justify if it's absolute. There's no more justification if you declare yourself to be in charge and that there are no exceptions. Dandavarte, there's no exception about personal growth. So, if there's no exception, it becomes hard because exception is our way out. Exception is our fun time. It's our little candy at the end of the day. Okay. Don't worry, you'll have candy. There won't be exception even to that. You'll have your candy. We'll find a way. What the ego doesn't realize, because it's a child, eh? it's not punishment when it hurts. 
It's wisdom. Wisdom is not revealed only through suffering. Wisdom is revealed through any experience that you take the time to digest, to observe and grow from. The wonderful secret of what we've been through so far in the Dharani is as you accept your responsibility, you become responsible of every joy, of every great moment, of everything you've built. You become responsible of every good step, of every accomplishment. You develop a great sense of satisfaction of being a great person yourself. Everything wonderful that you've done in your life, you become responsible of that too. And you become extremely positive about yourself. This Dharani is not a declaration that you are responsible of all suffering. It says you're responsible of every experience. Some of them are suffering, some of them are a happiness. And it's great to say, hey, I'm responsible, you know, all that happiness. Me. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> right? So you become an artist, a painter of Dharma. You can paint experiences, creative, to bring joy for you and for others. It gives you that power. And this is what is wonderful when you endorse the power of responsibility in the supreme way, any way it manifests around you. Su avartani. I'm in charge. I endorse it. I accept it. Then you have the power of great joy. You have the power of great compassion. And then nothing can stop evolution. Your ego loses its power over you. Then it panics. Eventually the ego says, oh, but at least the soul loves me still. <sighs> okay. So I'm not in charge, but at least you still love me. It's all I wanted. You know, I was just so afraid that you would just throw me in the garbage. Well, just look at how you speak of your ego. My ego is a bad thing. The mind, you should kill it. You know, every evil thing comes from ego. That's not true. Evil thing happens. Good things happen. It happens. You just blame the ego. <coughs> okay. Probably because the ego blames. Huh? So the ego, through its nature of projection, ends up being guilty of all things. That's not responsible. As a being, as a soul, you are responsible of all things. The ego imitates responsibility, he calls it blame. Huh? There's a difference between being responsible and being blame. Okay? Someone's charge or someone's fault. It's a very different concept. Okay? So the ego believes in blame. The soul exists in responsibility. So the ego becomes the fault of all sins. Therefore, it's certain when you don't need it anymore, you're going to throw it away. It's afraid to disappear because you keep telling it that it's bad. Which is not the case. When you become responsible, you say, wow, my ego allows me to cook. Thank you so much, ego, to cook. My ego allows to build houses, earn money, feel in charge. It makes me feel good. The ego allows incarnation. It's beautiful. It's great. Breathe. That is a lot of wisdom for the day. There is no ego, there is no reaction. I just explained that there is an ego. Hmm. So your question is based on a false assumption if there is no ego and everything is wrong. There is ego, there can be no reaction even if there is ego because your ego can decide not to react. You see that that was purely a, a, a response from the ego. Well, I want to stop reacting, my ego reacts, Get rid of the ego. <laughs> well, you know, suicide yourself, you'll never react again. I understand. <laughs> okay? Do you understand a misconception? 
The ego is filled with misunderstanding. If you want to stop reacting, and you have an ego that reacts, eliminate the ego. That's, that's the worst. Arr! You know, my head hurts, let's cut it. Okay, this is a typical ego reaction. Okay, if reaction hurts, stop reacting. That's it. It doesn't imply anything else. The ego just proves, wants to prove to you that if you die, you come back, it still will have another lifetime. It's happy one. Okay. So it uses tons of, you know, when you ask a question, you thought that it was wisdom. Huh? And that's what makes a lot of Buddhist masters say, eliminate the mind. Let it die. Just never nourish it. And then they become stupid dorks from the point of view of a Buddha. <laughs> no mind is not the absence of a mind. It's, it's to end the enslavement to the mind, which is very good, to end enslavement to the mind. However, the mind becomes the realm of, of the, the gods. The mind becomes the artist of creation. It's beautiful. It's great. Okay. So, thank you very much for the intervention, Baptiste. No, your name is Gaetan. All right. Baptiste is the other guy. Brother, the other one. Okay. Breathe. Do you understand the agility of the ego to throw you off the simplicity of the wisdom? The wisdom is clear. But you, on the clear wisdom, you will deduct fraudulent behavior to, to endorse being vicious. Like the misunderstanding of non-attachment. Never have desire again. Never love anyone. Specifically, you'll never suffer non-attachment. You'll never suffer detachment. Never love again. You'll never have to detach. And then you die because you don't love. Okay. Your heart becomes gray and you become maybe possessed or very sick. The ego is filled with pre-made solutions that are completely destructive for itself. Okay. So that is what we do in our studies. To learn how to rejoice in life, to find it beautiful, and to de-dramatize when it hurts. Yeah, it hurts, what can I do about it? Okay? And it's okay, your mind will pull tricks on you. It's okay, I understand. Been there, done that. It happens once in a while, still, I'm here. While I'm here, when we're incarnate, our potentials rise, they agglomerate, they start to have power, so they apply force. I see a reaction I have, oh, a reaction, I integrate it. All I have to do now is clean the dishes so they don't start to smell bad. And have a plate each time I want. Which is okay. We're good. I have this weird impression that your ego and your mind is filled with dharma and you need to digest until we have more. Let's take that sheet. <coughs> Let's just recite it from Adande del Suavartani. Okay? Adande danda pati danda parte danda kusare danda sudare sudare sudara pati buddha pasyane sarvadarani avartani sarvadashya avartani suhavartani Breathe. Again. Adande danda pati danda varte danda kusale danda sudare sudare sudara pati buddha pasyane sarva dharani avartani sarva dasya avartani suha avartani Breathe. Observe inside. As much as we have a great sense of power, a sense of responsibility, a sense of humility, a sense of freedom, depending on how, how you are with that dharani, there's a disappointment. There are emotional reactions stuck inside you that are awakened by declaring, 
that you're finally in charge. Okay? There's a regret that we have inside. We regret not awakening before. We regret fighting to remain in the dark. That should be your integration of this moment. To forgive yourself the time spent in the dark, you have to accept the moment of regret. Regret is not to hurt yourself in, in the head. It's not to punish yourself. Oh, I'm so bad, I regret it, I'm so bad. Don't punish yourself. Don't be hard on yourself by criticizing. Stop the criticizing part. Stop believing you're bad. Just go into the feeling. It's a feeling of regretting, of remorse. I regret that sometimes I preferred staying in the dark. And it just carried on the suffering. That's it. But not the chastising part where you say, you're bad for doing this. You're not bad for doing this. You're programmed to do this. It's okay. <laughs> you're genetically built to survive, not to evolve. Well, over time, yes. But not in the apparent immediate. We'll get to this another time. Okay? Good. Stay in that integration, but not to the point of not understanding the Dharma that follows. When you walk in the woods trying to get home, you are on a path. At one point you see something beautiful in the depth of the forest. So you go and you eat a fruit. It was great. It felt good. And you have another one, so you, you, you follow it. And then there's a rabbit and you follow the rabbit. And in no time, because you wanted to be entertained, you lost the path. And you don't know how to get back home. And now panic starts. You don't know how to go back home. And you lose time in the woods and you're in darkness and you don't see clearly to your emotions and your thoughts. And you don't really know where you are. And you, f you have a feeling you can't really integrate that one or, or that there won't be solution. Maybe I'm lost forever. You know, there's, there's a feeling of despair in being lost after not knowing how to get back on the path. But at one point, you get back on the path. The moment you're back on the path, the entire time spent in the dark forest doesn't matter anymore. Like this, it's, it's, it's over. You're back on the path, don't lose it again. Until the next rabbit to follow. <laughs> well, eventually we, we say, okay, entertainment is awesome, but let's play with the rabbit that are on the path. <laughs> okay, the one that corresponds to that path, eventually that path becomes the dwelling place. But you, do, you, do you understand that metaphor? Once you're back on the path, it doesn't matter if you spend 27 years in the dark. It doesn't matter anymore. Stop Gemini'sing. You find it, you're gonna get home, it's okay. You're progressing. So stop being so hard on you for for the time you spent not growing personally. Or if you wanted to forgive, but your pride was so powerful that it just did not happen. I want to forgive, but I can't, because I hate that person. <laughs> well, forgiveness is about not hating anymore. Yeah, but I don't know why, it just keeps going on. <laughs> and over and over and over, it just keeps going, okay? Until the hatred has much more suffering than the temporary pleasures of pride, then, then you want to forgive. Okay. It's okay. It's part of the process. Trust evolution. You will succeed.